Good morning, delighted to have Quaker here from African Stories Revisited. And you can tell us a little bit more about what, who he is, why he thinks it's important, and why he's on a mission to rewrite African history as far as the UK is concerned. Quaker. Thanks a lot for giving the opportunity. I'm not a historian. In fact, I describe myself as a history consultant, i.e. I research history and she have a paper, so I'm not interested in just regurgitating that 1417 we did this, but how does that relate to us in here? So as a consequence of my research, and my passion is not black history, but African history or African British history, I've noticed that some of our key histories have a lot of conflations and misinformation. In particular, this time when we're looking at Windrush or Empire Windrush, some of those histories have been embedded as facts when well, indeed they're not fact. So today, in particular, I had a session called Look, the other Windrush stories, where I tried to look at some of the things that we take for granted as fact in terms of the Windrush uh, narrative, and the, the African British narratives. For example, we do believe that uh, Claudia Jones had the first carnival in Britain. That is incorrect. In terms of Empire Windrush, the 492 passengers is bantied about, that's incorrect. So this particular event, I do lots of events, but for this particular event, it was about sort of correcting some of our African British history. So I focus a lot on Empire Windrush, and you have to understand there's a difference between Empire Windrush, we talked in 1948, and as far as I'm concerned, it took 20 1st of June 1948 rather than the 22nd June which is bandied about. 22nd of June 1948 is important. That's when the passengers disembarked from the ship, right? So it was about, yeah, us knowing our history and also putting some relevance to, for example, we talked about the Bristol bus boycott, which a lot of people have not heard of. They've heard about the Montgomery bus boycott. But I was saying that though the schools in terms of the curriculum have you doing African American civil rights, a teacher, if they so mind, they can say, oh, okay, uh, Malcolm, sorry, not Malcolm, is, is the wrong person. Martin Luther King made his famous, I have a dream speech, on a particular day in Washington, which was 28th August 1968. But can you say, little Jimmy, do you know that in Britain, something important also happened? That's when the Bristol passport officially ended. So they put a connection from American history to British history, which is where we're at. So that's where I'm at. I mean, I do things around music. So for example, this t-shirt is uh, promoting something called British Black Music Month, which is June, July. But I do African history throughout the year. And I don't do Black History Month, which is October, because I do it throughout the year. So we are today in June, and we're doing African history. So that's where I am about. So it's about me thinking that History is important, and it's important that people, if they're going to read the book, they're going to see something on the internet, or they're going to hear people, what they're hearing or reading is correct. Simple as that. That's what drives me. Great, that's fantastic. And I have to say, I've been distracted by that fantastic gig you got here. Can you tell us a little bit more about it and show it to us, please? Okay. What is this, please? So as you know, there's been a lot of Windrush projects. So the VNA had a Windrush uh, program a few months ago and one of the pro programs was a workshop where people could do this is called the grip that's a grip the grip suitcase so indeed in uh, the 40s and 50s these are type of suitcases that people from the Caribbean and indeed Africa would come with this uh, grip suitcase so I put it together but uh, <clears throat> also there was what they call the Windrush scandal which happened in a April but I wanted to make the point that what is called the so-called Windrush scandal does not just apply to African Caribbeans. It applies to everyone from the uh, Commonwealth. And that, interesting enough, is also the old Commonwealth, not the new Commonwealth, i.e. the Caribbean and Africa, but the old Commonwealth, people from, uh, what is it, Australia, Canada were affected. So I decided to put other non-Caribbean uh, Commonwealth stickers on there so you understand that it is about the commonwealth and not just uh windrush i.e uh the caribbean so yeah this is where i took some of the myths from that i want to sort of ex explain so we know for example that empire windrush uh arrived in tilbury and uh the ship empire windrush did not come from australia it came from tilbury straight to southampton from southampton to uh Trinidad from Trinidad to Jamaica and whilst we're Jamaica can I say they tend to say that it left Jamaica 24th May 
1947. Sorry, it was Empire Day. It did not live on 24th. It left on the 27th. So I've dropped some of the things that will be my book. It's. I think the book is going to be called something. Look how far we've come. Disrupting British Afghan histories with a question mark because I'll be breaking down a lot of the things that we're taking as gospel fact by so-called academics and uh, his historians. I'm not denigrating the historians because they do a, a good job, but there are a few misinformation about our histories here. And the point I had to do, especially of Winrush, it wasn't until 20 years ago that they really seriously started writing and reflecting on Winrush. So the information is not that old in terms of digging. So what people are doing, they're just repeating the same things. For example, you will find on the internet, and I know you use Wikipedia a lot, they may say that the fare from uh, uh, the Caribbean to Britain was 28 pounds, 10 shillings. It was not, it was 28 pounds. We looked at the 492 passengers. We know that wasn't so. It was just the African Caribbean people that came as migrants. There were some middle class Caribbeans on the ship that were not part of that number. There were Europeans, there were Polish people on that ship. That ship carried over a thousand people. So let's not get fixated with this 492, which is historical incorrect figure. If you tell us about your book that's coming out, when is that going to be available, Kwaku? I've had a commitment because I've got a launch date in, in November, so I have no choice but to finish it for launch in November 2018. Wow. wow. And that's going to be available in all good bookstores? All good online, books, Amazon, online, etc.? Online, definitely online. So it need not be in the bookshops, but it'll certainly be on, on the online platforms, yes. Fantastic. And in the meanwhile, if we want to know more about African histories we visited, can we go right. online to what site? Yes. Our history and community events are posted at afghan history plus that's p-l-u-s so afghan history plus dot eventbrite.com afghan history plus dot eventbrite.com in terms of the music programs i do and that includes music education it includes a, a bit of fun but i understand that we can do the music but we have to understand business side things like copyright and indeed we do something called british black music month it's been going for over 10 years and that's June, but because June was not enough, it spread into July. And that can be found on www.bbm.eventbrite.com. www.bbm.eventbrite.com. Quirky, you really are a community champion. Thank you for all the work you've done and the rewriting of history. And we're looking forward to this fantastic book that's coming out in November 2018. Thank you very much indeed, Quirky. Thank you for the platform and what you're doing. Thank you.